Maybe the mind cannot really comprehend the karma of kindness. I remember when uh, I was invited to stay with some monks and nuns from Myanmar. They had a meditation center. And they invited me to stay there, just to live there. And it was during a time when even my own family members, my own flesh and blood, you could say, were not as kind. And it was amazing to like... Just to be with them. They were like, yeah, you can just, you know, come here, stay with us. You know? Like, there were no strings attached. It melted me. Like, I, it blew me away. I was like, what? They're like, yeah, you can live here if you want. You got a meditation mat right here. You can meditate here. You can sleep over there. You got a refrigerator over here. You can eat whatever you want. And it had such an impact on me. It made me want to volunteer. It made me want to donate. It made me want to help and give service in any way that I could just to repay the kindness that they gave for nothing. Like just thinking about it, even reflecting in this moment, they did it for nothing. I had nothing like to give them in return. They just... They let me in there. And I asked them, you know, what was it about me that made you give me that kindness? What was it about me that you invited me to stay? What was it about me? And I'll always remember what they said. They said, we would have done the same for anyone. So we would have done the same. We actually, we've invited many people, but most people said no. Don't know why, but they just turned us down. They said no. And I, I was looking around. I was like, but look at this space. Like, why would anybody not want to take you up on that offer? They said, hey, you know, everyone else, everyone's on their own path. Everyone has their own journey. And they had a word for it in Burmese. Paramita, mini paramitas, mini good deeds. They were all about doing good deeds. And they said, Jerome, you must have done something in the past to lead you here now. So we don't know what you did, but there must have been something that you did or, or some things that you must have done to lead you here. Otherwise, you would have never found us. You would have never found this place. <laughs> that was their logic. It must have been something you did that led you here. And it gave me so much gratitude. I was like, wow, I have the opportunity to just be here to just live here, free of rent, in California, in Los Angeles, in Baldwin Park, in a place where people were struggling paycheck to paycheck. I'm paying nothing, surrounded by monks and nuns with shaved head, wearing three robes and, you know, going and collecting donations and doing alms round. And I'm just here existing in a place where people are struggling and I'm at peace and I'm able to meditate and I'm able to practice. And what did I do to deserve this? That was the feeling. They said, Jerome, you must have done something. Can't say what you did, but it, you would have never found this place. I said, wow. <laughs> so blessings. What have you done? Baby girl says, the kindest thing I've received was words at my lowest. What were the words? Do you remember the words? Do you remember the words that you received when you were at your lowest point? I remember watching a show called Avatar The Last Airbender. And it was the legend of Korra. And she was at her lowest point. She was ready to shed tears. She had so many fears, so many worries, so many concerns, but there was a lesson to be learned. And in that point where she thought the ancestors, the spirit guides, the universe, and all had abandoned her, she turned around, a voice behind her said something. She turned around and it was Aang, Aang, the last airbender. He was standing there. And he said that it is when we are at our lowest point 
that we are ready for the greatest change. We receive the greatest change at our lowest point. So what was the word that, that someone gave to you at your lowest point in life? Do you remember? So kindness. Three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind. Henry James. Doctors pledge to first do no harm. We can go one step further. First, we will be kind. Let us approach every situation looking for ways to be kind to others, even if our kindness isn't returned. We will be better for setting an example and living up to our principles. Tell yourself, today, I will do at least one kind thing for someone else. So it could be anything, you know, one kind thing for someone else. Like the other day, there was a lady at the grocery store. She just needed something on the higher shelf, you know. I helped her grab it, you know, I'm 6'3", I'm so I just helped her pull it down. And it seems so small, but even the small affects the all, right? In that moment, you may think that all you can do is something so small. Like Mother Teresa. They asked her, you know, Mother Teresa, while she was going around doing missionary work, there were people that didn't have any, anything. They felt like they didn't have anything to give. They, there was somebody that asked her, you know, they said, what can I give? I have nothing. I have no material wealth. I have no value. I have no currency. I have no coins. I have no cash. I have nothing. What can I give? What can I do? I want to do something. What can I do? And Mother Teresa said, smile. Smile. Something so simple, right? Just turn that frown upside down. And sometimes that's more than enough. As they say, when the going gets tough, when the going gets rough, sometimes a smile can be more than enough. You ever been to a grocery store or somewhere where somebody's working and it just seems like they'd rather be anywhere else but right there? Like they'd rather be doing a million other things. This is not where they saw their life as in that moment, they wish they had made other decisions. I remember a lady told me, don't end up here. Don't be like me. This is not a place for people like you. She said, it, it, it sucks your spirit. It drains the spirit. That was the perspective she had working there. But if you just give a smile, you just give a kind word. Sometimes on a cold winter night, a smile can warm you. Right? It can be like the light in the darkness. It costs you nothing. That's the thing. Kindness costs nothing. But it can give everything. Right? It's like you can give so much with so little. We make the mistake by thinking that we don't have enough to give. That is one of the greatest mistakes that someone can make. Thinking, I don't have enough to give. No matter where you are in life, no matter who you are, no matter what you've been through, no matter what trials, tribulations, what, no matter what adversity you've overcome, no matter what experiences, no matter what trauma, no matter what your, your, finan your, your finances, no matter what your level of fulfillment, no matter what your definition of success, no matter what, you can give. 
to another person. You can enhance another person's quality of life. And to think that you can't, it's an error of judgment. It is a grave mistake to believe that there is nothing they could receive, right? It's like, who am I? Who am I? But you are everything. Not only are you everything, you are more than enough. Mm -hmm.